Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana. I'm an acrylic artist. Thank you for stopping in and I hope you're going to paint today. We're going to be painting something really pretty today. Um, this is a tree. It's from a tree that grows in my front yard and I've taken so many pictures of it over the past 24 years. It's a Japanese magnolia or tulip tree. Let's take a look at what we're going to be painting. Isn't this gorgeous, you guys? It was so fun to paint. I don't know what's taken me so long to paint this particular flower. I just love it. And when my tree blooms out, oh my gosh, it is so gorgeous, so gorgeous. So it was really a pleasure for me to paint something that grows in my yard. Uh, I've painted a few things that grow in my yard in the past, but this one, I, I just don't know what took me so long. <laughs> um, I've used uh, Deco Art Traditions paints on this project, so I hope you're gonna paint along. You can use any paints that you want to use, and I am on a eight by 10 surface. Whatever surface size you want, grab it and let's get painting. All right, I've got my eight by 10 surface here. I am using a piece of hardboard or masonite. I have applied a coat of multi-purpose sealer with a two inch uh, damp foam roller, but you could also use an artist sponge to do this. And then I applied two coats of white paint to my surface. Have a nice smooth white uh, paint here. Lightly sand it with an ultra fine sanding pad or a brown paper bag after it is dried and you are good to go. All right, we're gonna start working on this project right here. I'm gonna be using Traditions paints so I want to get my background done first. So um, I think I will put out some warm white. I want, um, I either want greens or blues behind my uh, magnolias. Um, I'm not 100% sure which way I want to go right now. So I think I'll do uh, blue and maybe throw out some green just in case. So I'm going to use warm white cerulean blue pine green and we'll see if that's going to work. Alright, so I'm using the Traditions paints today. And um, they are now available on the website in these two ounce bottles. Amazing paint. I really hope you guys will try it. Get these tops cut open. I should have had these opened already, but I didn't. Okay, so I'm going to put my warm white out, which I had a bigger bottle of this. I should have got it out. Um, my cerulean blue. I might also put a little aquamarine out. I don't think that I will use the aquamarine, uh, but just in case, uh, I will need more cerulean than that, I think. And then some pine green. I don't know that I'll use much green, but we'll have it out there. I just can't seem to do any kind of painting lately. That I don't get paint all over me. It's just ridiculous. Okay, we're going to start out with a large flat or filbert. It really doesn't matter. Um, just grab a brush that uh, you like to use for base coating. Generally, when I'm uh, undercoating and base coating stuff, I use my older brushes save my better ones for the top but uh, in this case I'll just use my big brushes here all right I've got a three-quarter inch flat my line drawing is blowing away because I have my ceiling fan on okay here we go all right so I'm gonna load some of that white on here, that warm white, and work it onto my background here. I really wanna work wet into wet, so I'm gonna keep this paint as wet as I can for as long as I can. 
So I've got a good portion of it covered with the um, warm white. We don't have to cover the whole thing. I'm going to quickly rinse my brush. It won't take all of it out of there, but it'll take some out. And I'm going to grab some of my cerulean blue and work this in, blend it with that white, wipe my brush. This is a wet on wet. Ooh, that's really vivid. Grab some more warm white. Because I like that, but man, that was bright. Just keep blending. Those um, highs and low colors in the background. Now my warm white is already starting to dry. I'm going to lightly spritz it. kind of want it to stay wet. I'm going to grab some of that green and work some green down here. Maybe a little bit more. A little darker there. And then I can gently work it and move it around. I may add a little bit of black out here so that I can I wiped my brush off and grabbed some more warm white. I just want a nice background that doesn't um, compete with those beautiful flowers we're going to be putting on here. And I do want more green over here. Wash my brush, try and get as much moisture out of it as possible because I don't want it to start lifting and grab a little bit of warm white and smooth all those areas out and wipe my brush off. And it's okay if you carry your colors. You know, if you carry green up in here, not a big deal. You want to get out of it if you start lifting. I think right now I'm going to leave it right there. Uh, I like it. It's a pretty background, but I do want it to be a little bit darker, um, especially in my green area. So I'm going to quickly dry it and add some um, darker green in here by adding a little bit of black to my green to make like a dark piney green. I want it just a touch darker. you got to make sure it's dry though, because if it's not dry, we'll just start lifting as we go. I'm going to put out some more warm white, because I'm going to need that. Alright, make sure it's all dry. Cool to the touch here. And let me grab my black. Did I not get black? I did not get black. Let me grab some black here. Put a little bit out. Doesn't take much black. This is carbon black. Ooh, a lot of water. Alright, let's mix up a darker green here. I'm just mixing black in with my green to get this really deep, rich green here. Now this is going to be really bold when we put it on here. Right there is where I want it. And maybe I want a little bit over here. Why not? Alright, I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to grab a little aquamarine and some white. Warm, warm white. And I'm just going to start blending that out. Okay, wipe my brush. I'm going to grab some of the warm white and go into this darker color just a little bit. A little bit more of that darker color. I'm really taking my darkness away and I don't want to, so a little bit more black in there. I'm going to wipe my brush off and start. I might have to have a little bit of moisture here. Start blending that just lightly with the brush. Okay, I'm going to move back up here. A little more white. Um, when you're doing your background, you can layer them as many times as you want. Um, and actually that gives your background way more depth. Um, 
when you do that. Try to keep everything wet. That helps it um, move and look much better. All right, I started lifting in that corner there, so I'm gonna grab some paint and put it back in there. All right, so now I wanna go through the center here. I'm gonna wash my brush and grab the warm white, put it through the middle. I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna grab the aquamarine and a little bit of green. And we're going to go down here. I'm actually going to spritz this because that might have been a little bit too much spritzing there. I'm going to go up here with that brighter blue. Still have a little bit of green in my brush. I'm going to wipe out the paint. And now I'm going to blend. You need to work very quickly um, or turn your ceiling fan off. I have my ceiling fan on so, on, so working very quickly is kind of important <laughs> for me, but even when you're doing a blended background like this, um, it's really important to move as quickly as you can. Uh, this doesn't have as good a transition in it as I would like, so a little bit of paint in there, wipe off, might grab a little bit of moisture and blend. Now you could do the bouquet effect in the background of this as well. That would look simply gorgeous. You could do it right on top of your background here. And I'm going to really get a lot of wet paint there because that was an area I did not like work it out and blend it out very, very quickly. And I lifted paint. I really want more of this warm white in there. Okay, and you can just keep playing around with this you know, as long as you're working wet into wet, if it's drying, best to get out of it, um, especially if your brush is really, really wet, because you'll just continue to lift. And as you are blending, if you can go up on the very tip of the bristles, um, it will um, help those uh, colors to blend very nicely and be a nice smooth transition. It just takes practice blending your paint out like this. So, but I think it makes a simply gorgeous background. I think that's a pretty good background for our uh, magnolias that we're going to be putting on here. I'm very happy with it. I think it looks great. Um, if your water got very dirty, now is a time when you might want to um, clean out your water. But we started out with the warm white, worked the cerulean blue over here, the aquamarine over here, the pine green over here, and a little bit of aquamarine and pine green over here. Okay, and then we came back with a second layer, adding a little bit of black in with our green down here. And actually some of that darker green could be carried throughout the uh, background a little bit more, like over through here but I think for now I'm going to leave it. I'm going to get it dry, change my water, get my line drawing ready. Okay, I've laid my line drawing on here. I taped it on this side so I could lift it up and check things. Use my gray graphite and a stylus, but you can also use a pen or a pencil and transferred on my basic lines. So uh, we are good to start painting now. Oh, that background looks so, so beautiful. I just love how it looks. Okay, I've got my water cleaned now, and we're going to get ready to start adding some base coats in here. So, 
let's get this ready. I'm going to pop, prop it up on my easel here. Easier for you, easier for me. Alright, and this is going to allow me to get my palette in the camera shot a little bit better. So, Alrighty, here we go. Okay, so magnolias are um, unique, I think. Now, I have a magnolia tree in my yard, but it is also called a Japanese magnolia or a tulip tree. And then there are the other magnolias that have the big, beautiful, dark, almost waxy looking leaves. And then they have big, bright, or not bright, but big white or kind of warm white, <laughs> some of them, uh, flowers on them. And they grow really, those trees grow really, really big. You can keep them cut down to bush size. Um, my magnolia tree has the pink and white bloom. So that's what we're going to paint today, are flowers, because that's what my tree has, and I have so many pictures of my blooms that I thought it would be a great one for us to start with. So I'm going to put out some white on my palette, and we're going to mix a little bit of blue. I think our cerulean blue with it and we're going to undercoat all of our um, flowers with this. So we're just going to mix a, a small amount. I'm just going to mix a puddle of it over here with a little bit of that blue. We just want it um, blue enough so that when we um, add white on top of it, we can really see the white. I might add a little bit of warm white in there. And take that down a little bit. I've got a lot of paint in my brush here. All right, so we're just going to undercoat Put some water on my palette because I know I'm gonna need it here. We're going to undercoat every single petal. So just start wherever you want. This should be like a very, very soft blue as you put it on here. So that when we um, go to apply our pink and our white on top, they will stand on top. Now that one right there will, will be green. Well, we won't paint that one in. And then any turned place that we have will eventually be pink, but we still want this color underneath it. So I'm going to paint in every little section on its own so I can retain that shape. And I'm going to work my way all the way around my surface here, um, just filling in each petal and making sure that if there's a turn place that I paint it separately. Now you want to go to a, if a smaller brush for smaller areas. So if you get to working and your brush is way too big for the area you're working in, then grab a smaller brush and work with a smaller one. I actually have a size 10. I could go down to a smaller one here, but I'll work with this one as long as I can. try and go all the way up to my graphite lines. Um, if I don't paint over them, I can erase them. Um, but just know, I've said this on many of my videos, almost all of them, <laughs> that if you get paint on your graphite lines, it's set in your painting forever. So you want to try and put a uh, 
good enough coat or two over it to make sure it's covered and not showing through into your paint. Okay, so there is one flower <laughs> that we have undercoated everything with this bluish, light bluish color here. So I'm going to go off camera and just do the rest of them. They're done the same way, uh, just repetitive stuff. Um, just fill them all in. This one will paint green. We'll come back in and do our stem. Uh, this one will be green as well. So just these two little ones here will be green. Uh, we'll probably add some green next to these uh, other blooms, but um, for now, uh, they're they're good just the way they are. So let's apply two coats of this color to every petal. Okay, two coats. All right, I've got my two coats on there. Let's go ahead and base coat in our stem with uh, our color, and I've decided to use a mix of warm white and burnt umber. Uh, probably add more burnt umber to that just to darken it up. And this is just going to be our undercoating for our branch. The branches on magnolias, trees, bushes, however you let them grow, um, is a pretty substantial branch. I'll leave a little space there so I can add some green. of that petal right there. <laughs> so I'll go back and paint that. Um, this color is pretty opaque so I'm thinking we probably won't have to have a second coat because I may have it a little darker than what I actually wanted it to be. So we'll just do the one coat because we might have to adjust some color along the way. going to worry about those little leaves right now because that's something we'll do later but I am going to go and paint that finish that petal in that I missed the uh, turned part of it and then we'll be ready to start adding some color on here if you cannot tell where your turned parts are on your petals put your um, line drawing back on and very lightly put them on. I'm going to look at my line drawing and put them on for your benefit so that you can see where they're all at. And they may not be perfect but they'll be on here. And then this leaf is turned here and then goes this way. This one is turned. A lot of magnolia leaves, their petals turn on themselves. So let's see where else we have some areas we have to highlight or mark. That's the inside of those um, petals there. One, two, three petals up there. And then there's a couple of turn places here. That's why I like for you to paint them in separately, um, your turned areas, because um, then they don't get lost in the painting. So you want to you know where each leaf goes to. So if you can't tell that, then put your lines back in to help guide you. Um, but you should be able to tell where each petal individually or turned area is. Okay? So if you can't if you can't tell, then you know you can put your line drawing back on and add those lines on, but be sure they're not super incredibly dark. You want them just where you can see them. Um, I don't need to see them. <laughs> 
only you, so make them as light as possible. I'll keep mine a little bit darker for you to be able to tell where I'm going and what's happening here. But when you're painting your own painting, be sure and make those graphite lines just where you can see them. Just a really pale line so that you don't have to worry about trying to cover it up with multiple coats of paint. Okay, we're going to get ready to start adding some color onto our flower petals now. I am basing these off of my uh, magnolia tree. It's a Japanese magnolia tree. And um, I may come in later and add some leaves. Right now I just want to concentrate on the flowers, the blooms. And mine are a pink color. Um, a very, very pretty pink color. So we're going to go with that on ours. Now I'm going to be using the quinacridone violet. This is a color that's no longer available in the traditions line. Uh, but they have the red violet available. It's a little bit darker, <clears throat> but you can add a little bit of white in it to lighten it up. I'll probably be doing that anyway. I just want to get this uh, quinacridone violet used up. So let me put some of that out. Not going to need near that much, but that's the way it came out. Um, and I'm going to put some white think just titanium white and I might also add some warm white out here because I'm not really sure which one I'm gonna want to use so we'll just put a little bit of both of those out Clean my palette knife off here and we'll start painting in. I'm going to go with an angle brush to start this. Let me spritz water. I got a clean palette page, so <clears throat> let me. Um, I'm going to start with a 3 8. I might have to go up to a bigger size um, on my bigger flower. If I can find my bigger angle brush. Of course, you never, nothing's ever easy when you want it to be easy. It's a half inch one. So I'm going to start with this 3 8 3 8 inch one here. And we're using the either red violet or quinacridone violet. And I'm going to take a little bit. I kind of want this to start out transparent. So I'm mixing it with some water here to um, help it to be a little bit of a lighter color. <clears throat> Grab some water. And this is just going to send the paint out so I can make it more of a wash of color on my petals. And so it's generally the back side of the petal that has all the color. The inside of the flower is normally just white. So this one here is the back side of this petal here. And so I'm going to put some of this on here and just kind of scooch it up with that water edge of my brush and bring it up in there a little bit. Um, just find the back of all your petals and put this color on. This one's really turned here so we're only seeing the inside there so it's going to get a lot of color and actually I think I will remove just a little bit of it up here with the water edge of my brush so I wiped the paint off and grabbed a little water on that edge so I could take some of that off because we're just using thin layers here we want to keep everything a little bit um, softer and transparent right now that one's getting a little dark but it's okay because some of these um, have extremely dark dark petals now this one here we can see a little bit, actually, let me look at the line drawing because I think I made that one where it's just the inside of the flower. But I am going to put a little bit of color maybe along the edge down here. I'll have to think about that. I'm going to get some of these other petals painted in. So this one here, we'll be seeing a color here. It's definitely going to be darker down at the base than it is at the 
at the top. So you see I have the toe pushed into that corner and I'm just going to kind of walk it up and give it a little bit of color there. Nothing, uh, no big color change there. All right, this one here. So again, I'm just kind of scooting that up there. I'm keeping the water edge going towards the tip of the petal because it is going to be the lightest. Okay, and then this one here has a little bit of a curved edge here. So we're getting a beautiful flower established there. And like I said, on this one, I may come in. Well, let's see if I can do it with this brush. <clears throat> I may need a round brush, but I'm going to give it a shot with this one. I'm going to put just a little bit on the edge of this one. But this one's going to mostly remain a white flower. Just a little bit along that edge. Um, and then we'll come back and do a little more, a little more layering on here. I'm going to pull some of this up because this has this um, like lines that come up in here. And then we'll, we'll um, define that a little bit more with some white paint as we go along. All right, let's move over to our next petal. I'm going to work some water into my paint here so I can have a light color. I'd much rather start with a light color <clears throat> and build my layers. Um, it just makes uh, the painting go along easier plus it gives your painting more depth and that in turn gives it a little bit more realism. Okay, so that'll be white inside there. And I'm going to make this one mostly pink. We're seeing the back side of this petal. Now I haven't added any white to this. I'm just using the straight paint. <coughs> just a little bit on there. You don't need to put out near as much paint as I've put out here, but... Okay, so we've got, um, this one here has a turned edge, so it's like right there. Okay, so we can see the back of this one. Alright, and just bring it up just a little bit. I'm just going to, a little bit along that edge. Just small amounts of paints here. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to this one here. And there's two petals back here. This one, we're seeing the inside mostly of it, but we can see a little bit of the edge right there. All right, so this one, we're seeing the back side of this petal. I'm going to wipe off, get a little bit of water, kind of soften that out. We'll be darkening and blending out a little bit more. We can see the back side of this one here, so it's mostly going to be pink. see those super hard lines on there so all right and this one back here I can't really tell what we're seeing here but we'll just paint it like this is the back of course we're seeing the back of it here I just don't know if it's flipped any up here or not so you can use your own judgment here with this one Okay. 
and then this one here um, I think I'm gonna leave it mostly white it that way just a, with a little edge on it <clears throat> nothing big nothing big now our color that we painted in was a very soft blue to right now it's looking pretty white but it's a soft blue all right let's move over here to this other small one this little bud so we're gonna put some paint on it got three petals here. And there's one here. This one hasn't even started to open up, so it's going to it's going to be a pretty pretty much all pink. And then we've got one here. And on any of these, you could make a turned edge where you could see a little bit of white on it. But we're just going to keep it a little bud that hasn't done much of anything yet. Okay, I'm going to stay with the smaller brush here because we are just painting the backs of the petals so I should not need to go to the half inch flat so I'm going to stay with this 3 8 inch <clears throat> and we're just doing the back of these flower petals so anywhere there's a turned place those are the areas that you want to paint and I'm not filling it in completely I mean, we'll come back and add more, so no sense in trying to make it super incredibly dark right off the bat there. All right, just a wash of this color. Now, some of these flowers, when they, when they grow, I, I found it very interesting when I was researching uh, magnolia, uh, um, Japanese magnolia. Some of them are incredibly dark. Uh, on the back. I, mine are not. Mine are a little bit lighter. Um, but some of them were just really, really, really this bold, dark, velvety looking uh, purpley, and not purple, but kind of magenta color. <clears throat> okay, this one is flipped forward so this is the back of it this is the very tip of it right here the very tip that's curved up so I'm going to make that mostly pink there. All right, so let's see our next one. Really work some water into that paint. Keep it nice and sheer. Is this one, I'm just using the tip of the brush when I'm down in those really tight areas. Right, I'm going to pull some of that. I'm going to wipe my brush off, grab a little drop of water. nice and soft to start out with. This is a pretty bold color. You could also use um, fluid acrylics on this. Those would be gorgeous on here. So you can already see how this is coming to life here. So pretty. All right, let's do this one. Just a little bit more paint up on the tippy toe right there of that brush. Okay. 
I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And um, this one that's mostly white here, or that's all white there, and that one, I might put an edge where we can see a little bit of color. So I'm going to create a little bit of an edge here almost like a turned edge. Right there, and I think I might do the same to this one out here. Get a little color going here. I'll just give it a little bit of an edge. You can see a little bit of that. Okay, I'm just giving a little bit of edge to some of these. We don't have to do this. I mean, we've got our center to put in here, so we may not see any of that. Like we're just getting a little glimpse of that backside there. And I think we're looking pretty good for our first layer of that pink on there. Look at those magnolias just coming to life. I absolutely love this. Okay, we're going to continue with that same brush and the same color and we're going to add a little more definition on our um, petals. So we're still going to want to use the same sheer color uh, that we used before. The same color, same sheerness. So a lot of these petals have kind of like veins. They look like veins. Well, yeah, they are veins. But they are just some of the softest, lightest uh, veins. So like up the center, we can have this one coming up. And it go, it, they do go all the way up to the tip. But they're very thin when they get up to the tip. Okay, then I'm going to go on the chisel edge and pull a few of these up in here just very lightly because it does have all these little vein things coming into it. These are very, very thin. If you cannot do it with this brush, then grab a um, detail liner. Just keep your paint really thin. Let these really go soft as they come up that flower. Um, and don't let them get thick or heavy. Now you can omit this step if you want to. Not all petals are going to have this. Uh, just the ones where you feel like you can see the back of it. Like this one, I feel like I can I could probably see that vein coming up through here. This will just be random. I mean, you know, we won't be doing all the petals, so we just want that little bit of vein stuff going in there. Now this one will obviously see it. I'm up on the very tip. This is such a sheer color, you guys. Now I'm just going to take the wet edge and kind of scoot that out. we still got to darken these petals a little bit at the base. So I'm just taking... Let's see, that petal comes all the way over there, so some coming up here and just take the water edge and kind of lightly let those kind of fade away it's going to be way too much paint there wipe my brush off and grab some clean water okay so this one I'm thinking we can see the vein coming up here And take that water edge, scoot it out. I'm using just the tip to draw the lines. I mean, really, just up on that very, very tippy toe there. 
because my paint is thinned with water and it's sheer, I can get some nice thin lines with that. The, the moisture in your brush is key to this, okay? All right, let's come over here to this one. A little more paint. Grab some water. And we'll create this center vein on this one. Anytime it starts getting a little dark for me, I'm just going to take the water edge and try and soften that out. And then we'll put a few in here. And let's see, maybe we can see a little bit of this one peeking out here. So we'll bring it up. I don't want it to look like a turned edge, so you got to be careful that way. Okay, looking very nice. Okay, over here on this one, I think the only place we're going to see is this one right here. So I'm going to start at the tip and work my way down to create that center vein. Maybe soften it a little bit at the tip. And then I can come beside it with some of these other striations or whatever. Now, you can add as much detail to these flowers as you want. Um, it really, they do really look like they have these spidery veins coming off of them. I'm not going to get that detailed. <laughs> I'm going I'm to keep it more, um, you know, just kind of basic stuff here. Because there's really a not, a not a lot to these flowers. Okay, so we've got our little lines in there. We are going to come back with white and bring it down the other direction here in a minute. But we want to darken at the very base of these petals with uh, some of this same color. Let's darken on these. I want just a little bit more paint on my brush this time. Still, I don't want to overload my brush because this is a pretty potent color. So at the base of them, I want them all, the ones that are turned that we can see, I want it darker down here at the base because this is where it is the darkest on these flowers, and these petals. So anywhere that you can see the bottom, try not to get into the background there, the bottom of these petals, you want to darken. So like right here, I'm just going to create a dark edge right there and then just darken right there. Okay, This dark color could actually come up along this back edge a little bit. Okay, so on this one, right here, grab a little bit more still want to keep this a wash of color, but you've added a little bit more paint into that wash now. Okay, I think I've done all the petals here. Looks like I've done all the petals on that one. That is looking beautiful. So let's move on to the next one. This step should not take you very long because you've already created the color on the flower petals. So you're just darkening at the base of the petals. And I'm going to bring a little bit of this up on this one. Okay, I think I'll add a little bit more color to this one. It wasn't quite dry, so it might be lifting it a little bit. 
I really do want the base of these to be pretty dark. That bold, bold color that you get on these flowers. I just think it makes all the difference in how you lay your colors in here. You don't you absolutely do not want to get them too dark to begin with. So you've got to keep that light color to start out with. here. I'm not going very far, as far as I'd like to go with that color. Okay, I'm going to define this edge a little bit and just bring that color up just a tiny bit. Anywhere where I feel like I get too much, uh, when we add our white in, we can definitely lighten. Now some of these you may have to come back in and add a little bit more because I really want it to be super dark down at that base. Okay, I'm not going to add like any you know blue or you know a black or anything on here mixed with this because I don't want it to get that dark. These flowers are still just so, so bright. So I want to keep the color the same, just a deeper color than we started out with. That This one, it's a little bit bigger petal, so I can carry that paint farther up this petal. And I definitely need more. The paint is starting to dry out a little bit here. This is still still some sheer colors here. I'm not. Um, moisture out of my brush now because if I go in here with a lot of moisture I'm going to just lift all that paint that I just put in there. So that one I'm definitely going to have to have some work done to it. I gotta let it dry though. Because see I got it really dark on the edges but not so much there and that's where I really need that that color to that pigment to shine is right there. Alright let's go on this one. moisture on my palette here. So that one will definitely need some work done to it. <laughs> All right, let's move on up to this one. I love when I start seeing these pink little buds pop out of their little pod things. background. That's looking so pretty. Alright, still just using a sheer wash. dark back here. And 
some of these I'm definitely going to have to come in and do a third layer on them. Just keep picking up the paint and the water, blend, blend them so you get that nice wash of color. your way around each petal that has the back side of the petal showing. on the tippy toe of my brush here so um, if you can't stay up on the tip of your brush very well you can go to a small round brush doing that part okay we're looking pretty good here so let me go back to that one one here, actually both of these, and a little bit more paint right here. And on this one, let's be a little darker. Alright, so just look at your petals, any one that you see that you think needs a little bit more color, just go add it in. Still keeping it a nice light color. I just want those darker areas defined really good. I'm just going to do a quick a quick once over on all of mine. I want to make sure I've got that really dark. I'm still just using a wash of color here. This one actually should come up the back of this petal a little bit. to start coming in with some white here in a minute. Um, this one needs a little bit of attention. Okay, then kind of just step back and look at it and see if you need more pigment, pigmented color anywhere. I still feel like this one up here needs to be darker. Um, this is the one I might have to add because you've got a dark petal against a dark petal. I will add a white edge on there. But um, I think overall they're looking really good. So 
that was just our second layer there. Now I'm going to let this dry really good. And I'm going to go in and erase the graphite lines on my flower petals that have that do not have any uh, paint on them. The ones that don't have paint will come off very easily. If they have paint, not going to come off. Um, so you'll just have to paint over them as you go along with your lighter colors. But I want to get them off before I start adding white so I don't have to add so much white onto those layers. So, oh, it's looking gorgeous, you guys. Okay, we're looking pretty good. There's just a couple more steps left to do on the petals. Um, and then we have a center to do here, and then we can go out and work on the branch. And I still haven't decided if I'm going to add some leaves on these yet. Um, that's to be determined. Uh, I got all the lines off that I could get off. So I think I'm going to stick with that same brush, but I want to make sure it's really clean. I don't want any of that pink in here. Um, if you've got another one, you could grab a second one or a flat brush. It doesn't matter. Let me see if I have a, another one of this size of angle brush, which is a 3 8 inch angle brush. That's what I'm using. I do have one, but it's kind of rough. Maybe I'll go to a chisel brush. Do I have a chisel brush? I have a tin out. Um, I just think I'll stick with it. I just want to make sure it's nice and clean. No pink stuff. So I don't want to have my paper towel having pink stuff on it where I'm going to wipe my brush. So I'm going to get a clean paper towel for this. And I've got some clean water in my basin, so I'll rinse in the dirty water and then make sure I go rinse into the clean water so I don't pick up any um, of my uh, pink into my brush. So now on our um, petals, we want to pull some of this white paint kind of down into, we'll, we'll define the edge if you want to define the edge, and then we'll just pull some white just from the tip of that brush um, down into that area and we can put some of this the edges of these petals do have a um, little bit of a white edge to them so you could put a little white edge on them if you want to that's going to help define the edge of the petal a little bit so we'll do all of our, our outer um, edges of petals first just by pulling some of this white loosely down into our petal. And I think I'll clean my water off of my palette so that I can get no pink in the water. I'll put some fresh water down here. Water. I'm just picking up clean water, no pink paint. Okay, so doing the white, it's going to take a couple of layers, uh, obviously, to get it to really pop. So I'm just going to pull a little bit of that down in there. And then we'll come back and do the centers. I just want to get the outside edges kind of a little bit of this kind of going down into those uh, outside edges. Just like we did with the um, pink, I'm just, you know, kind of skimming it onto those petals, um, the ones that you can really see the back of. I do have a little bit more paint in my brush. It is not, um, I do not have it thinned down like I did with that other because we want this to be pretty opaque here. So just go up on the edge of the, the, edge of the brush and slide it down your petal. Okay, I got paint too far on my bristles here. Create that edge. Again, you can do this with a round brush or a detail brush, 
but I like using this brush because then I can take the water edge and soften out any areas that I feel got just too carried away. So we want to streak some of this white down in here. The tips on the back side, now not all, but the tips on mine are a, a much lighter color. Um, some of them go dark all the way up. So I'm just lightly putting some of this on. I wanted to find the edge over here. Okay, this one out here. We'll get some white. Those are going to be mostly white on the inside there. And we'll put a little bit out here on this one. And then I do want to define an edge here. Let me grab some moisture. So this edge, this petal. So we can see that edge there. Now you only want to put this white on the ones that you're actually seeing an edge. Um, not uh, the ones that, like this one, I can't see either one of these edges because that one's turned over and that one's tucked underneath that one. So, but I can already see I'm going to have to come back and define that a little bit more. When I come back with the more definition right there, I am definitely going to come back with a, a detail brush. All right, let's move to this one here. And a little bit at the tip and just kind of streak it on the tip here on that edge. And then streak it down into the petal. You don't want to cover up all your pink stuff, but um, you do want that to kind of go down into the petal to make that kind of variegated look. That's the way my my petals look anyway. Alright, so this one I'm going to go along this edge. And then a little bit here. Just a little bit. Keep a damp brush handy if you um, get too much. then you can uh, take a damp brush and remove it. But that comes down into the back of the petal. And I know we spent all that work painting them darker, but we needed that darkness so that when we came in here with our lighter color, it would show up more. So then I'll streak some of this in here. Soften some of those. And get my center vein in this one, it definitely needs that center vein, so I'll have to come back and add that. Okay, move on to this one. I'm going to do the inside edge first and then come to the tip and help create define that tip a little bit, and then just a little bit of streaking and pull that in. We're not covering up all of our pink, so don't cover it up, you're just getting that variegated look in there. You can come back with your um, pink and put some of that back in if you feel like you lose too much, but I really wouldn't worry about it if you lose too much because these flowers are so many different 
colors that um, I think you'll be fine however however they uh, turn out with their color they're still going to be really really pretty okay. all right so I want to do a couple of those again but I'm going to use my liner but for now I'm going to rinse my brush go in and start doing the centers of my flowers so I'm really going to load up with some white and put some white in here now you should be able to see this white pretty clearly um, because we painted that a really soft blue so now we're going to paint the majority of our centers in with just white. These have like a velvety, soft, smooth um, inside to their petal. But they are pretty, mine are pretty white. So I'm going to leave a little bit of that darker color like right next to another petal and not completely fill it in with white. Well, I'll definitely have to do this a couple of times. This one is white in here. And this one is white in here. This petal is white. Inside here is white. The white will be a little bit less. So I'm going to move over to this big one because that one doesn't have any insides that we see. But we will come back with our round brush and add some definition. So we want white. If you cannot tell, which mine is a little bit hard to tell, that you have a like a blue color underneath, uh, you might not have gotten your blue a little bit blue. But we, we didn't want it to be super blue. Mine is... Um, a very very soft blue so any edge that's on top you definitely want that to be bright and we're just kind of painting in I don't know probably on the camera shot you can't see the difference between my my light blue and this white that I'm putting on but I'll be doing the white a couple times so hopefully that will make that blue pop and if it doesn't I can come back in and add a little bit more mix some mix some blue and add that in here But they're so white inside, just velvety white, just gorgeous. So let's get this bright white on here, and then we'll come back with a few um, detail lines with our round brush. And see if there's any white areas we need to go over again. We have the center to do on this big one here. But they really should be starting to just pop forward now. Now that one I think you can see a little bit better. That lighter color that's underneath it. That kind of bluish color that's under it. That was 
a little farther over on my brush bristles than what I wanted. Okay, that is a looking absolutely gorgeous. I am loving it. Alright, let's take our round brush or detail liner, whichever you want to do. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Let's see what I got here. I think I want to use a round brush. If not a three, I'd like to use a two. Let's see if this two will get me a thin enough line. Looks like I might have missed that one. Put some white on there. Well, it looks like I painted it there, but some color I need to cover up right there. Um, I will probably come back and do a little bit more white in the open part of the uh, flowers. Alright, let's see if this will get me a thin enough line. I do want a little bit bolder edge on some of these. And what I'm doing is just outlining it. I'm really up on the tip. I've added a little water to my brush and now I'm just kind of blending that down into the flower petal. And this edge we can see all the way down. Okay. And any of your tips that need to be a little bit brighter, go ahead and put just a little bit on the tips. Just have this brightness right where the edge. I'm using clean water here to thin my paint. I don't want to get any of that pink in there. Really thin line here. where you might want to switch to a detail liner for, for like this one because it's very tight there. Okay, I think that's looking really nice. Okay, so we're just going to work our way around I'm working on the little bit of center and a little bit on the tips and then the edge. Tip up here, inside, and then let's see this edge down here. That one there, I probably could make that a dark color because it um, might be the back side of that petal. I brightened that tip so I want to pull a little bit of brightness down from that so it's just not sitting on that tip by itself. just not going to come down as far as you did with your previous layer of white. So really I'm just brightening up edges. That's actually the edge of this petal here. Edges and tips and a little bit in the center if you need. I need to darken that right in there. It didn't get its dark layer. A little bit more on this one. Okay, 
That looks really good. Let's go over to this one here. A little bit on the tip and just pull it down and then we'll come down this edge. Same on this one, a little bit on the tip. Gently stroke it down and then come down the tip. Um, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and just a small amount of water so that I can just get the paint to flow a little bit. I don't want it to um, thin my paint so much that it disappears. So. Nice flowy consistency to your paint, but not super, super thin. And this is looking so good. did a first first layer on that one so I have to come back and do a second one I still got to put the center vein in this one because it, it didn't get its center vein That's looking pretty good. I think that will finish out our flowers. Um, I don't think that we need a whole lot more on these. We just need our centers, or our center. We're only going to have one flower that's going to have a center. I think this one here I might go ahead and make the back side of a petal. And this one. It's really hard to define what that is. And then I'll come back in with my my white. And clean up a little bit here. And right here. And I think that's looking pretty good. I think that looks really good. Let's work on the center on this one. So I don't think I've drawn that on my line drawing yet. So I'm going to have to get the center ready for this one. Uh, get the lines transferred so we can paint to the center of this one in. But that has the petals done. So we've got the center and then we've got the, the branch itself and I'm still deciding on leaves or not to put on here. All right, we're going to work on the center here, and it is uh, just this 
cluster of little stamens that come up out of the center. Um, they're really tight and compact in mine. Um, they're compact in the other ones, the white, the white magnolias as well, but they are, it does seem like, I guess because the white magnolia trees, the, pet, the flowers are much bigger, so the center is much bigger and it comes way out of the flower a little bit. On my tree, as I really zoomed in on the photos that I took, um, it does not come up out of the flower. It's not as big, um, but uh, I think it will be fairly easy to paint. And I am going to do some shading on this one, I think, to separate things a little bit more after we get the center done. I think it needs a little bit of shading. So we're going to start on our center here. Okay, so the center thing is um, just a bunch of group of stamens coming out of it. They, it does have a little bit of a brownish color in the very center. It could be yellow, but I'm going to go with brown since I've already used brown in my project and lighten it up with some warm white, I think. And we'll start with that color. And then we're going to use our um, color that we put on the flower and at that end. So I'm going to start in the center. I'm going to mix my warm white and some burnt umber. I think I'll add a little red to that. And it's not giving me the color that I want, so I'm going to have to go with some kind of gold color in here. Let's do some handsy yellow medium here. Or hands of yellow, whatever yellow you have will be fine. I don't know if this one is a discontinued color. I forgot to look on the list. So, take the yellow and the warm white and a little bit of burnt umber. And that's going to give me, that's going to give me almost a golden color here. If we add any red, if that will change it up too much. I don't want it to look too green, but it can look a little green. Okay, so this is just going to be some strokes. We won't be able to really see the definition of these strokes until we come back with the final details. So in the center here, we're just going to have a bunch of these um, yellow ones, and I don't want them to be really fat. I'm, they do have kind of curled ends on them, uh, but uh, we'll make that when we um, let me erase my graphite line a little bit. I already got paint on it there, so I can't, but uh, when we come in with some white, we can define that. So I'm just going to pull some of this, or stroke some of this in here, and right now it's just going to look like a clump of yellow. It's not really going to look like much. Just a clump of yellow in the center, which is fine. Okay? All right. Then we're going to take this same brush, and we're going to take our pink color that we put on our flower, and we're going to mix some warm white with it and make it a lighter pink, um, a lighter color not transparent. This will make it opaque. And this will be bright when we first put it on, but again, we'll come back and add some layers in here. So we'll put some in here. Just stroke some of this in front. You can have a few back here on the back if you want. Uh, get a little water so I can thin this. But this all comes kind of tight down into the center right here. So again, we're not going to see much definition with this right now because we've got to add more layers on here um, to get some more definition. Okay, so it's that yellowy color, yellowy brown in the center and um, the pink and uh, the red violet and the warm white mixed together for out here. Okay, so that is just 
beginning the center. So now we're going to start darkening the colors that we just put on there. I'm going to start with the pink color first. Let's go into our red violet and now this is where you might want to go to a detail brush. If you don't have a brush that you can get up on the tip of it really nicely because we're going to start defining some of this stuff back here. So we're going to make a little thin, little darker line on here. So I might want to move to a detail brush here. I think I will do that. Let me grab a liner brush. Let's see if I've got one that will work for me. Or a one round, which I can't find a one round. There's a one round. We'll see. I don't know if that one's going to give me a fine enough point or not, but we'll give it a shot. Alright, so what I want to do is just, I want it a little darker on the end, but we'll come back and do that later. I just want some really thin lines here. We're going to go in and do our center and then we'll come back out here and do more to these. But we still want to see that little bit of pink that we put in there. But now we want to see a little bit of definition um, on our um, pink uh, areas. Okay. So that's our second layer um, of the pink. So let's go to a second layer of the brown. So I'm going to go with, um, <laughs> no, I'm just going to go straight brown, I think, for in the center, which is burnt umber. And I'm going to put this in the center down here, but I still want to pull some strokes up of this, kind of shaping it into the shape that I want it to be. That's kind of a say it's a ball but yeah, it's more of a rounded shape so I'm just going to pull some of that up in the center so that was with the burnt umber onto the yellowish part that we put in there and then just our red violet on the outer edge but I tried not to cover everything up um, if you know if I could help it I tried not to cover everything up um, we're going to come back with another layer on the red probably not another layer on the brown and then we're going to add white or warm white as our finishing um, color on there. Okay, I'm going to go back to that uh, round brush and I'm going to take my my uh, red violet and I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to this. Let me really thin this down because it's incredibly thick here. So the burn number is just going to darken it just a little bit. Alright, so we want to put a few of these in here. Ooh, a little bit more burnt umber, I think. Darken it a little bit more. And we'll put a few of these in here. for. This is like giving it some shadowy stuff in here. But it's still that, that red color, so... Not a, not a lot of these bit more brown because I want to see a little bit more darkness in here. Okay, so it was just a just a few. Not not a lot. Don't um, get crazy with uh, that burnt umber mix. It's it really was mostly burnt umber with a little bit of that um, red violet in there. Okay, let's start adding some lighter colors on here. It's going to make a huge difference on this. So I think I'm going to uh, start with some warm white because I can always move up to just white if I don't think this is doing what I want it to do. So down here on these lower ones, we're going to put a little bit of this warm white down here. Again, not too much. We're just kind of creating a little bit of 
definition in here. I, I do want to come back and add, they have like these little dark tops on them. Um, actually, I think I'll go ahead and do that next because um, I'm going to take the straight violet because my tops on these will come over these. So I'm going to take the straight violet and just add some little dabs on the tips of my red ones and you can move them down to give it more uh, make it look more thick and layered so they don't all have to stay just at the very tip top back there they will but as you come down and forward um, they can come down it a little bit we'll, we'll shade down there here in a minute but that's gonna um, help those a little bit we will put a little little dot of highlight on those as well but I want to get those dry. A couple of those got a little thick so that I can do my highlights on my center part. Okay, I grabbed a, a 10 o detail liner because these next lines I want to be pretty thin. So uh, I'm going to take my warm white here and thin it down. I want it to have a nice flow to it. So add water and get it a nice thin consistency. Not so thin that it fades away as soon as it goes on your painting, but we want nice thin strokes here. So these in here have little tips that come up and they curl and they go every direction like this. So just a little like curl and tip and I'll probably have to come in and add some white ones to it. So just a little curling on them. Yeah, I'll definitely have to add some white. And then on the little white dots that you put out here, we can use this or we can use white. Some of them will have a little, maybe not that bright, just a little. Okay, you can just barely, barely tip those. And then I think I'll thin some white and add some white strokes in there because those warm white ones really were fading in there. Oh, goodness gracious. Very thin little strokes. You're barely letting the brush touch the surface and just creating some little hairy type things that are in the center. Okay, so that's that's all you do to that. So we just need to shaden it and a little bit of shading on this flower to separate the petals. So we're gonna work on getting that shaded down in there first. So I'm gonna go back to my 3 8 inch angle here. And we're gonna shade at the, the base of this with some of our um, red violet. And I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber to it to get it a, a darker color. I want to shade it down here at the bottom of it. Get it kind of give it a little base right there. That's going to help it out a lot. And wash my brush off. And then we're going to shade on the flower itself. Now, um, in my photograph, I really zoomed in to see. It depends on the time of day, obviously, to what your shadows are going to look like. Um, but. I think I'm going to create a little bit of a gray color. So I'm going to put some carbon black out and take my white and make a little very, 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 very light gray. We can always darken it, but if we get it too dark, then that's not showing up. So we'll add just a little tiny bit more to sneak up on that, that gray color. Don't. 
don't let it get too carried away. And we're going to add this down in here. I'm going to also add some little, uh, probably some pink down in here. But I also want, I'll get you on camera here, to put this around my petals a little bit to create some shadow around them. So this is a, really a super light gray. Might add a touch more white to it. So let's see, right here we'll have a little bit of shadow. And right here, a little bit there, a little bit there. So I'm not putting it everywhere, I'm just kind of moving around the flower and putting it here and there. Um, don't it, it's, it's gonna be so easy to get this so dark and I don't want you to get it dark so um, you know if it's too dark add more white to it just kind of go over your areas we just want some little subtle shadows I'm going to have to wide angle you out because I'm getting you completely off camera shot here You want to have a little bit of shadow around this thing here. So I did add just a tiny bit more black into my mix, but I'm going to grab my white and kind of blend that out so it just creates a soft little shadow there. Shadow down in here. It's going to be a little bit dark. So you know how to create a shadow. Where one petal lays over another one, is close to another one, is, um, you know, creating any kind of covering. So this is with just a very, very, very light gray. Grab some moisture. It's kind of dragging there. And I think that's really making this pop a little bit better. Giving it that shadowy stuff there. I like that a lot. I'll probably come in here with a little bit darker just right there. So I'm going to move over to my other... Like this one here. I feel like we could add a little bit of shadow here. This is such a small amount of paint, you guys. I don't want you to get a lot of paint on your brush. I don't have a lot and I am mixing the smallest of amounts as I do my layers. Trying to keep it all pretty much the same value. And if I can't see it, I can add just a little bit more of the black in there, but I'm trying to not add a lot. I think these shadows are going to help a lot. I think it'll make the white pop a little bit more. This one over here, we can add a little bit. And then this one can have 
a little bit as well in here and back in here just a little kiss of a shadow in there and that really is the softest of a gray color don't get too much like you do get too much then go back in with your white and lighten everything up okay I'm gonna take that uh, black and my red violet mostly red violet not very much black See if I'm gonna like this. I don't think I'm gonna like that. I want to do more black. I think. And really, really thin that down on my brush. I have a tiny bit of red violet in here. I just wanted to darken kind of right at the base of that a little bit, give it that little bit darker center. Let's wide angle out because that's going to help us see it a little bit better and see if we like it. And I think it's gorgeous. So I think that will finish up the center very, very nicely. Um, not a whole lot of steps to it. Let's see a line I didn't get erased here. That definitely helped that lit, just that very, very subtle, subtle, subtle soft gray shading. And like I said, if you if it if you're painting it and it's too dark, more white in your mix and get it lighter um, until you get it just this really, really soft uh, gray color that you can add in there to create some shadows. Now, doesn't that look just absolutely gorgeous? All right, let's work on our stem now. So the stems on these, pretty substantial, they kind of are very, I don't want to say wiry, but they do have a lot of, go in a lot of different directions. There's a lot of stems on my tree, a lot of branches on my tree, and they, they just kind of go everywhere. But they have these little um, bump outs on them, kind of. So we're going to paint a few of these on here. Um, I don't know if they're the forming of leaves. They kind of look like they might be the forming of some leaves. But they are on the stems. Got one there. I think I'll put one here. And maybe one back here. So we're going to paint those little bump out things, just base coat them in real quick. Um, and we're going to use some of that pine green and get those painted in. They'll become darker, but um, this will just get us a good undercoat on here. Just a little, I mean, they don't really have much shape to them. Other than this kind of round shape, so I'm pretty sure they're the beginnings of some leaves that will be coming out. Okay, now there are leaves that go around um, the base of our flowers. So we do want to add some of those in here. Um, I think I'm going to draw. Now this one already has one on it, but the it, it's yellow down here. So, but I'm going to put one here on this one. 
Um, I think I might actually put two on this one. It's kind of when it opens from the pod. I think I want it right there. Um, the pods are actually a brown color, but they, they come out and they have these leaf things. This one already has one drawn on it. And it can have one or two on it. We'll, we'll just do one. Uh, but I'm going to paint those in with a mix of the pine green and the Hansa yellow medium. Try and make a bright green here. So mostly yellow. And we'll just paint these in with this color. Now we'll have to apply this color at the base, uh, or at the top of our branch here because as it goes into the the flower it has this color but I'm gonna have to add a little bit of white or warm white in here to make it opaque because down here at the base and then it comes down onto the branch is this green color so I added a little bit of warm white to it so it made it lighter so right on the branch, this goes right here where it comes into the flower. Okay, we can't see anything here, so we're not going to worry about that. So we need that little mix. That's That was the yellow that I painted the um, little flowers in with, which was... Uh, Hansa yellow medium with a little bit of um, pine green or you can use Hansa yellow whatever yellow you got will be fine and then uh, I added a little bit of warm white to that mix and got a little bit lighter color uh, and painted this right on our um, stem ends right where it meets with the um, the bud or the petal or the, or the flower, the bloom. So it goes right in there, right on it. Okay. So we've got those uh, colors on there. Okay. I'm going to add a second layer onto my, my little leaves here. Um, I might have to go with that opaque mix that I mixed up because uh, my, I'm not covering up my lines very well. So I added a little bit of warm white. This is the yellow and green mix. A little bit of warm white so it makes it a little bit lighter. I'm going to try and erase some of these lines I put on here. Um, but some of them I'll probably have to add more paint to cover up. white in here and we'll just go back on the, the base of the, the flower onto the limb. This is pretty bright. So let me see if I can erase my lines around these. Don't think I can so I know that one I can't. So I'm going to go in with another coat there. use this bright color that we used on the tree trunk itself try and cover up that those pencil lines okay that's, that's got a good start right there for those um, that was a mix of a yellow, mostly yellow, a little green, and a little warm white to make it opaque. A couple of coats on the one little leaf that's at each flower, and then this part that comes down onto where it grows out of the um, stem itself. All right, let's work on our branch here. <clears throat> so I'm going to get some burnt umber out and some of my pine green. And let's see. I think I might get a little bit of the blue that was in the sky. A little blue on there, some cerulean blue. Um, 
I'll also put warm white and um, titanium white out. <coughs> so, warm white. And some titanium white. And <clears throat> I'm not going to add yellow onto my palette yet, but we will add some yellow on here in a little bit. We're going to work on the branch itself first. So what I want, I think I'll also put a little bit of black out. Um, I want to darken where the branch is next to my uh, flowers. So I'm going to start with just the burnt umber. <clears throat> I'm also going to go down one edge of my um, branch with this. I'll zoom in a little bit, not too much because i got to be moving this around and I think I may end up getting you off camera if I get too close. So start by putting some dark down here <clears throat> don't forget this little branch sticks out back here now I was really looking at my photographs um, to see about adding some leaves to this but when my tree is in bloom um, there are not a lot of leaves like um, branch will have so many blooms on it. There are not uh, a lot of leaves around these flowers. I kept looking and looking and I'm like, where are my leaves? So, um, you know, there were leaves on the tree. It's just that there was more flowers than there were leaves. I'm not saying they all are like that, but that's the way the photos from my trees were. <clears throat> my tree. I only have one. All right. So where, um, uh, the branches kind of break off and where the little green pod things are which I think is the beginning of a leaf and they come in fairly quickly when they come in we're gonna put some of this dark color right next to that little green pod. we're gonna put some of this burnt umber on them in a minute uh, but right now we're just gonna get some of this like right next to where they um, touch the branch just a little bit don't uh, don't think too much about it just put a little bit of dark paint on there everything's gonna be good gonna be good all right let's uh, make some separations here now <clears throat> the branches at least my branches <laughs> they don't always just come out straight and smooth generally where there is one of these things on it it kind of bends and juts and so the branches are like that they go up and then they like where that one would be it would jut that way and that would come back and jut this way and go up and jut that way so um, that's the way the branches are on uh, my tree um, but I just made these kind of a smoother branch make it a little bit easier for this particular uh, design here. So now I'm going along one edge of my branch and creating <clears throat> so you can see here I brought that shading a little bit of burnt umber over that one so it really pushed that one behind and the same here. So I'm up on I don't have my brush laying flat like you would. Now you could go to a quarter inch angle. I have it tilted up so I'm just taking the toe of that brush um, along that edge. And all the way down. So here I can have this one on top or this one on top. It makes no difference which way you go. You can you can bring that one over or just bring this one straight down, which is what I'm going to do, which creates the how that branch is actually growing right there. Okay. Same here. All right. 
white so it makes it look like this one is growing off of that so we can add a little bit of, of this down here this will actually I'll just put it on both sides of that one and don't forget this one back here So I gotta figure out where I want to make some darker areas. This burnt umber, we're still just working with burnt umber. So on this one here, I've got to decide which one's on top. So I think what I'm gonna do is make this one be behind. So I'll put some shadow there. And that's going to make that one be on top. So very easy to do. Okay, anywhere you feel like you need to just go in and add a little more. Like especially where one lays over another one, I definitely want to add <clears throat> a little bit in there to make sure we got our shadowy stuff going good in there and I may darken those areas up a little bit because <clears throat> I think they're going to need them <clears throat> so after we've done that I'm going to take my detail liner and thin down some of this burnt umber and we're going to start adding some stuff onto our branch here and if your branch is so dark that you can't see your shading, that's where you're definitely going to want to add some black in there to it. Um, these branches are kind of speckly. Um, so I'm going to start by just kind of speckling on some burnt umber. We're going to add some other colors on here as well. But I'm just going to speckle. Let's see if you can see that. Just some little random dots and stuff on here. I'm going to be adding some lighter color speckles on here as well. Deepening our shading. Just a few little speckly things, okay? So I'm gonna light angle out a little bit. Maybe you can see that better. So that was with the burnt umber. So it's why you can't see it incredibly well, because it was with the burnt umber. I'm gonna go back with my other brush. I'm doing all of the burnt umber work right now. <clears throat> and I'm gonna take this and put a little bit at the base of our little green leaf things where they connect to the branch. There's a, they're dark right here where they connect. You're just doing the very base of, of this little green nub thing that we put on here but you want to make sure that it looks like it's connecting to the tree, not just floating out there on its own. So <clears throat> you can bring some of that burnt umber into the, into the limb itself. <clears throat> okay, I still want to stick with this burnt umber. I want to darken some of my shadowy areas, shaded areas, so I'm going to mix a little black with my burnt umber. I'm just going to make a very pretty um, black brown color. So I want to put a little bit of that right here next to my flower and a little bit right here. A little bit here. Really, I really want right next next to those areas to be the darkest. Okay. 
a little bit of darkness in there. So we've just gone everywhere with just the burnt umber. So I'll tell you again, we did along the edge, bottom edge, or the left edge of your branch. We did along the bottom of the green area. We, we did where one comes underneath a branch, which, which is behind. So we, you know, just determine. It's not going to be right or wrong whichever way you go. This one could be on top. That one could be behind. It's totally wherever you put the shadow is going to determine what's on top, what's not. Okay? And then um, we did a little dabbing with some burnt umber. So that's our burnt umber work. So we're going to start adding a few other details onto this branch now. I want to darken my shading um, on the edge of my branch. So I'm going to take my burnt umber and a little bit of black mixed in there. And I really want to darken some areas here, especially where one branch is behind another. I really want to put this little mix of color to give that that extra depth of shading. <clears throat> okay, and then I also want to do a little bit of this. You can do a hit and miss kind of thing along your uh, branch edge that you already shaded on. So you don't have to do the entire thing. Just put some of this here and there so that we have this um, mix carried out. That's a little bit too much black. A little more brown in there. Okay, right here I need some darker color because that's behind that branch there. Get this one back here. All right, we really want these branches to look rounded. So the way to do that is go back into your burnt umber, and we're going to go along the other side just a little bit. Just a little bit. Don't let it fill in your branch. We're not connecting to the other. Uh, shadow here which that we did on the other side. We're just giving it a little bit of darkness on the edge. This is very small amount of paint here. It's almost like you're lining it, but because we have moisture in our brush, letting us keep that nice smooth little line of paint there. Okay, so that should be starting to give us a little bit of I need a little bit more darker paint on this one. It needs oh, not out there. It needs to be darker. I'm making a mess everywhere. Okay, that's that's looking better. <clears throat> we just want the branches to look rounded. They're generally not as thick as I made that one. Um, that one's a pretty thick little twisty limb there, but um, not too bad looking. So let's add some uh, light little dabs on here, and we're going to add some warm white dabs on here. So just a few here and there, because the branch has this on it. The branch that I'm looking at, that I'm referencing, I guess I should say has this on it. 
these little white places on the branch. Okay, just those those little white um, nubbies. We can bring some of these around the edge here a little bit so they're not just staying on top of the branch. It's going to help with the round looking stuff. Okay, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Now the um, there's a little area like right next to the little nub things. So I'm going to take some warm white and a little bit of blue and a little bit of burnt umber. It's just going to make this blue gray color. Okay, so this blue gray color um, right where those little leaves are growing where it kind of bends this is like right there like right right beside it just right beside it it's not like on it um, it's on the limb and just take the water edge of your brush and kind of smooth that out It's like if it was jutting a different way, this would be like right on that part that, that juts a completely different way. But I didn't make mine go jutting around. <laughs> so we're just going to put this beside where it kind of connects to the limb itself. I think that's going to help start giving us a little bit um, more texture in our limb. Okay, I'm mixing cerulean blue and a little bit of burnt umber and I want to start creating some uh, other color on here. I think I'll add a little warm white to this. This is that same color we, we mix for here only a lot more blue and a lot more warm white so it's going to be much lighter and I just want to skim this on our limb starting to create some highlights on there. This is a blue-gray mix. Uh, the color that we put next to these green nubs had more brown in it. This has less brown. You can add that in there. That's a really pretty color. I like that. I think I'll go back and maybe do a couple places a little bit more. Just a little bit. We don't want this so dark and opaque that it um, covers up. I think a little bit more blue in the mix will help. This is just a light little skimming of this color. It's not, um, not overly... It's just here and there. It's not. It's not every place. Okay, just hit it here, hit it there. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Okay. I think just a couple more things um, on the branch, and then we can move on to the little green areas. Okay, I want to take that blue mix again, um, which was blue and white or warm white and some burnt umber. Not too much burnt umber. I want it to be mostly the blue and the white. The burnt umber is just to dirty it up. So um, if it starts turning too yucky, then um, just add more of the blue and the warm white. 
I want it put a little bit along this edge of the branch. And I think I want a little more blue in there. I want it to look more blue. More blue than any other color, but I, that cerulean blue can be pretty bright. So. Go really light on adding more warm white. I really want to get it close to this edge over here. The opposite edge that we have our darkest shading on is kind of where I'm concentrating it, but I'm also concentrating it where we have that previous little bit that we put on there. And I'm just kind of doing a jagged little wiggle and jiggle here. If that made any sense whatsoever. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I feel like I need to come back with my burnt umber on the lower edge. Like I maybe lost a little bit of it, but I want to keep the burnt umber kind of sheer. So get some water mixed in there. I mean burnt umber can be a pretty transparent color anyway. Just a tiny little bit here. I don't I don't want to get so much that my branch just loses all form and shape here. I just wanted a little bit more in there. All right let's add a final little highlight on this with some uh, white. Um, actually I think I'll make Maybe a gray, white, and a little bit of black. Really light here. Really, really light gray. Barely any black, any black to it at all. And I'm just kind of lining the edge. Lining the edge. We'll put some highlight in those blue areas, but with this I'm just kind of lining the edge a little bit. I'm trying not to let it get super fat. I'm just going to dab, actually I'm going to add more white to it and just give a little, a little bit of a highlight on here with some white. We don't have to do too incredibly much with this, so just a little dibby dab. Pretty much where you just lined it with that light gray, you're going to go right next to it and just put some little dabs. Just some little dabs, or a big one, that one was kind of big, almost got away from me. Okay, it's as easy as that. Um, you're just putting in small amounts of paint on there. Okay, at any point if you feel like you've lost something, you can go back to that and work your way back out. But I think my branches look pretty good. I'm happy with them. Um, that one is a little fat. I don't really like how fat it is, but I can't change it at this point because um, the background is a model background, you know, different colors. If it was a solid background, I could very easily fix that by just coming in and thinning it with some paint and then applying that little nub thing right there. All right, let's move on to our green stuff. We're going to do the little nubs, finish them out, and then we're going to finish out these green sections. All right, let me get my hands of yellow medium out here. And we're going to mix some green and yellow together, mostly yellow. Uh, we're just going to make a little highlight for these little nub things. And that's all we're going to do to them. They just get a little highlight on them. 
on the very tip of them. Add a little bit more yellow in there. Just on the very tip. We don't want to cover up all that pine green. So it's just a little bit. white to these, this color, to make it mix, uh, pop a little bit more. Okay. Let's see if we add some white, if that'll make it a more opaque, yellowy green. I missed this one all together. Yeah, that makes it pop a little bit more so let's add a little bit of white in that mix it's mostly yellow a little tiny bit of green and a, a little bit of white just the white is just to make it opaque okay just doing the little tips up here out here okay we should still see that pine green all right pine green back into a couple of these. I think my um, my brown came out a little farther than what I would have liked on them. So I'll just put a little bit of that green back in here. Some of them I can't see the pine green at all. So if you need it, add it back in. Okay, that's those little um, leaf buds, I guess, that are starting to come out. I'm not sure what they are. <laughs> they look like leaves. In the picture that I'm looking at, it looks like the beginning of the leaf. So you can add as little or as much detail onto those as you would like. So. I just want to smooth, try and smooth that out a little bit. Just a wash of the pine green. That yellow is really standing on top right there. Okay, that looks much better. Okay, so the areas that are next to the flower, we're going to finish those out. Uh, I think that's going to finish this painting when we get those done. So with those areas, it's a little bit different. Um, Okay, I think the first thing that I want to do to these is take some thin pine green, maybe a little yellow mixed in with it, and I'm just going to add some little, I have to go straight pine green, Let it show up in some little tabby things on here. Um, even though this looks like a little leaf, these things are very, very fuzzy. We're going to dab some green onto them. I'm just using my little detail liner. Because you know they open up from these little pod things and the pods are fuzzy themselves uh, when they appear on the tree. They're, they're very fuzzy. Okay, let's do some yellow and warm white. Let's mix those two together. Thin them down. Thin it down. Let's see if this is going to show up. Oh, okay. That's too much paint right there. <laughs> I just want some little dibby dabs like we did with the green. Hoping that when we get all of the details on this, these little dippy dabs look like little fuzzies on here. I don't know that they will, but this is my interpretation. <laughs> so, okay. I think we'll have to 
to do that again because that's already fading in there so I'm going to add a little more warm white in there little dibby dabs might add some just straight warm white ones on here as well I had to edit camera shot for all that that's what happens when I zoom in if I can wide angle and keep keep the whole thing that I'm painting on in the screenshot okay I'm gonna go in with just some a uh, little warm white I am gonna thin it down uh, actually I'm gonna mix warm white and white together and thin it down I'm gonna try this I don't know that it's gonna work but I'm gonna try to make some little little tiny strokes that would make it look like little fuzzies on here. Okay, that's way too much paint. I don't think it's going to work because these are such small areas. I, I don't know how to interpret the fuzzy stuff. So I'm just going to put some little, little tiny lines on here. This is white and warm white mixed together. Try and come outside of the shape a little bit. Maybe that will help. And outside of where it's um, connected up there. It'll help break up that little... Okay, now that they're all textury, <laughs> with our, with first our dots of uh, yellow and green mix, mostly yellow, a little bit green, added a little bit of warm white to that, and then just now with our mix of, um, then we did some warm white dabs, and then we did a mix of warm white and white. So those three layers on there. All right, let's see if we can make this look like something now. I'm gonna take my pine green, and just a little bit a little bit go down to a quarter inch angle brush if you uh, can't get just a small amount on a 3 8 inch so first thing we want to do is separate separate our little leaf from the area now this one the leaf is on top so I'm just going to put some at the base back here. So this one will separate it. This is just pine green. Pine green is kind of transparent. And then this one here. Okay, let's take this pine green and get a little bit more on my brush here. And we're going to go on, I think, well I was going to originally do it on the outside edges, but I think where I need it is at the bottom where it connects to the branch and up here where it connects to the flower. So we're going to take it into the branch a little bit and kind of choppily put it there. Put a little bit up here, very choppily. We're going to add some of that red up there, that violet up there at the top. 
We just want this to look like it's connected to the branch itself and not just kind of floating around up there. So you're going to do it at the branch side and the flower side. Okay? I'm going to grab a little bit of that violet color and put some of that. here okay so I just want a little bit of this uh, red violet and we're gonna do it right here I might have to darken that a little bit maybe with some black or some burnt umber maybe or some green, any of those colors will be just fine. Make it a little bit darker. Maybe not that dark. Find this fine line here. And we'll put a little bit of this coming into the, the green area. It doesn't really show it like this on the picture, but I kind of felt like it needed it, you know? Right here where it connects to the flower itself. We're going to take some of that yellow and brighten up, brighten up, because this is very bright. So I want this in the center of our area that connects it and on the tip of the, the tip of the leaves, because this is really, really bright. Okay, on the tip. center. Okay. And I really feel like I've lost a lot on here. Just feel like all that oh, there's some kind of some kind of vehicle outside that is making the most horrendous noise. So I think I'm going to come back with a little bit of dabbing here. Some yellow and yellow, white, warm white mixed together. All these are mixed together. Put some of this back on here. This can be our little highlight on here as well because I feel like some of that texture kind of got lost. I don't know if I'm going to like this when I sit back and look at it, but I just felt like it, it got so lost in there and um, got too dark and I need that bright yellow color back in there with that little bit of green. I just that needs to be so bright in there. This area needs to be really bright. So if you've lost your brightness like me, just take a little wash of that yellow and green mix. Add it back in there. I think what I need to do is zoom out so I can see it and see if I like that. So that's not too bad. I feel like a little bit of burnt umber is needed here. So just look it over and see if it needs anything. I think it's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Shake that leaf a little bit. Kind of lost its shape there.
Okay, I think I'll just do a few little dabs of just white on these leaves. For a highlight, maybe in this, oh, a lot, in this center section here. Brighter. Not sure that's really what I wanted. Just, I just can't seem to get that exactly the way that I want it. It's just this bright yellow green in here. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just incredibly bright and transparent. Fuzzy and I really think that's the best I can do with it. Oh man, how'd I do that? How did I do that? Must have been when I got that color out just a little while ago. How you can erase it with a white eraser, but you have to be careful because you can start going through all of your layers right down to the surface itself. So I removed a little bit of that gray color. Let's see if I can mix up a color that's even remotely close. How this turned out. I hope that you guys have enjoyed painting this. It's Lana's Magnolias is what I've titled it because these were the magnolias out of my tree. And uh, I think it just turned out exceptionally great. Let's center it in here, get a zoom in on it so you can see it. Look at that. Beautiful magnolias. I love the color of the background. It's so pretty. But you can have the background any color. You can have a blues like the sky. I actually had my grass behind a lot of my photos, so um, I liked that look. So I kind of thought, well, well, let's do grass and a little bit of sky. Let's, <laughs> you know, see how that looks. Um, but I love it. I think it it is gorgeous. It turned out beautiful. I really enjoyed painting this. I hope you guys did too. Give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this and uh, please subscribe. Please share. I appreciate you all so incredibly much. Please, please subscribe. All right, you guys, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.